This is an x-ray of a broken rib cage spinning at 45 rotations per minute. And there's a sound coming from those tiny grooves etched into the x-ray film. How else would you listen to illegal music in Soviet Russia? There are many great things about the Soviet Union, but in terms of uh, what you could listen to, watch, read, etc., it was subject to a censor, so there was no freedom in that sense at all. That's Stephen Coates of the Bureau of Lost Culture, based in London. Stephen studies the myriad and ingenious ways people skirted the Soviet Union's draconian government censors. The music was seen as both anti-intellectual and also that it might encourage unwelcome behavior. As a result, this subversive music was banned. But it didn't stop the people of Soviet Russia from getting their hands on it. We had these machines where you could go into a booth and people would make little souvenir recordings of their voice. But in the evening when the shop was closed, this guy was using his recording machine to copy forbidden music to make what we would call bootlegs. And he was giving them to friends or selling them. They had the machine to copy the records, but what medium were they going to record on? Commercial blanks like those you'd find in the West were in short supply. Some Ingenious Soul had discovered that it was possible to make a record, to cut the grooves of recorded music onto the surface of X-ray film. It became a kind of underground culture. More people started to make X-ray records. More people started to build their own recording machines. And in the dark alleys of the Soviet Union, Bulegger swapped the sounds of Elvis and Charlie Parker on prints of fractured pelvises and sprained shoulders. In the mid-1960s, a new, easier-to-use technology would appear on the scene, the reel-to-reel -reel tape recorder. The X-ray black market died soon thereafter. Despite advancements in technology, there's still something that brings Stephen back to the X-ray records. There is something poignant and poetic and romantic about that collision, if you like, of the physical aspects of, of being an X-ray of the body and the content of music which we normally associate probably with the soul or with the heart. Now that's what I call soul music. <laughs>